After George Weiss purchased a Winton motor carriage and stock in the company, his mechanical engineer friend, James Packard, found the vehicle to be disappointing, so much so that he complained to the company and was then advised to build his own car if he thought he could do better. As a result, George, James, and James's brother, William, formed the New York and Ohio Automobile Company, introducing their first car at the end of 1899, a small single cylinder with automatic spark advance. The cars quickly earned a reputation for reliability, attracting a group of investors that would restructure the company and rename it the Packard Motor Company in 1902. They would introduce their first four-cylinder model the following year, and their trademark ox yoke or cathedral window grill the year after that. Then they would earn a perfect score in the Glidden Reliability Tour in 1906, effectively establishing themselves as one of the three P's of prestige, along with Peerless and Pierce, later Pierce Arrow, putting Packard at the high end of the luxury field, with prices starting five times higher than that of a Ford. And soon they would begin producing commercial trucks, using the same powerful engines and heavy frames as the luxury cars. To stay in line with their primary competitors, Packard started producing the six-cylinder models in 1913, starting with an 8.6-liter, 525-cubic-inch T-head on an 121, 133, or 139-inch wheelbase, available in 10 body styles. But a smaller 6.8-liter, 415-cubic-inch version arrived the next year, each with a rear-mounted three-speed. And since Cadillac introduced the first production V8 in 1915, Packard introduced the first V12 in 1916, marketed as their soon-to-be legendary Twin 6. Initially, 7 liters or 424 cubic inches and producing 88 horsepower on either an 125 or 135 inch wheelbase. The standard color was blue with cream stripes and details with nickel-plated trim, but custom colors could be ordered, and often were. In 1921, a 6 returned to be sold alongside the 12, initially on an 116-inch wheelbase, and selling for under $5,000. But by this point, in spite of their high prices, they were still one of the best-selling luxury brands in the world, being sold in 61 countries, selling better than cars half their price, and using the Ask a Man Who Owns One marketing campaign. And instead of using model and model year, cars were produced in a series, making changes as needed. In 1924, the Twin 6 was replaced by a straight 8 in 136 and 138 inch wheelbase. It featured automatic chassis lubrication, shatterproof glass, rubber floating motor mounts, an available synchro mesh 4 speed, and ride control adjustable shocks at the touch of a switch. Packard had not only taken a firm lead in the American luxury market, but was also the biggest exporter of luxury cars. And the company reputation was so strong, it was said that more people owned stock in the company than owned the actual cars. The 6 would be dropped in 1928, and trim levels became standard, custom, and deluxe, and a special limited production speedster was introduced, with 150 being made over three years. The 5.2-liter, 320-cubic-inch straight-8 had aluminum heads and produced 90 horsepower, while top models with the bigger 8 had up to 106 horsepower. At the start of the Great Depression, Packards were competitively priced from $2,400 to $5,400, with sales dropping to $36,000, still more than twice that of Cadillac, and far beyond any other competitor in the segment. That would quickly change, however, as Packard ignored the changes in the economy, and sales fell to under 18,000 the following year, even though power was up to 100 to 120, and then to 110 to 135 the next year, when sales dropped below 5,000. By this point, its competitors were going bankrupt, and Cadillac claimed the sales lead, but only by including LaSalle sales. So naturally, Packard's response was to move further up market and reintroduce the Twin 6. Although the price of the base light 8 had dropped under $2,000, the new 12 ranged from $3,800 to $6,000. The 7.3 liter, 446 cubic inch engine produced 160 horsepower, 
on either an 142 or 147 inch wheelbase. And they followed that the next year by creating a new runabout speedster. But Packard was bleeding money, leading to a complete and rapid restructuring, leaning towards improving manufacturing efficiency. With results showing as early as 1935, with the new entry level 120, indicating its wheelbase. It used a smaller 4.2 liter, 257 cubic inch version of the straight 8 with 110 horsepower, although the bigger 8s and the 12 carried on with up to 175 horsepower. The 120 started around $1,000 and accounted for 25,000 of Packard's 32,000 total sales for the year, once again more than twice its closest competitor. And for 1936, the engine increased to 4.6 liters and 282 cubic inches with 120 horsepower. And Packard's remained the favorite of world leaders, being used by the likes of Roosevelt, Stalin, and Emperor Hirohito, causing some to refer to the brand as the American Rolls Royce. There were several changes in 1937, the biggest of which was the introduction of the even cheaper six a 3.9-liter, 237 cubic inch L-head with 100 horsepower on an 115-inch wheelbase. It started around $800, the realm of Oldsmobile and DeSoto. The cars would also transition from mechanical to hydraulic brakes, and there would be a long wheelbase version of the 120, although it would still be referred to as the 120. The big 6.3-liter, 385 cubic inch 8 was dropped, and the 320 cubic inch Super 8 was the only package between the 120 and the 12. Sales recovered back to over 120,000, putting Packard in the top 10 in overall sales for the year, and again the following year, in spite of an economic relapse. 1939 would be the final year of the 12, and EcoDrive was introduced, a sort of overdrive to reduce RPMs at speed for improved mileage claiming better than 18 miles per gallon from the 120. For 1940, the 6 was renamed the 110, and the high-end Super 8 was offered as the 160 and 180, with wheelbases ranging from 122 to 148, and the 320 straight 8 was replaced by a bigger 5.8 liter 356 with 160 horsepower. Then Packard would introduce the first power windows as an option in 1941. Up to this point, Packard's design philosophy had remained conservative, which had proved successful in the premium market. But in an attempt to move things forward, they introduced the Darren Design Clipper that year as well. Based on the 120 sedan, it was lower and sleeker, with a new chassis and suspension, and a 5 horsepower bump, priced around $1,500. While the traditional styled cars carried on, from the $1,000 110, to the $5,600 180 limousine, but soon the Clipper design and name would be used on the entire line. But as the U.S. was just entering World War II, the Clipper's timing was a bit off, and Packard transitioned to the production of Rolls-Royce Merlin aircraft engines. The design no longer seemed so modern when production resumed in 1946, and sales were slow to recover. There would be a restyle for 1948, but it was little changed mechanically outside of the introduction of the Ultramatic, being the second company to develop a fully automatic transmission after GM. The 245 and 282 would be replaced by a 4.7-liter 288 and 5.4-liter 327, with the 160-horsepower 356 remaining the top engine. Both the 6 and the Clipper name were dropped with the return of traditional trim levels. Base, Super, Deluxe, and Custom 8. Prices were $2,300 to $4,800, as fear of a post-war recession kept the company from moving back into the high end of the market. Sales for the year would be over $115,000, but fell significantly for 1950, dropping Packard to second behind Cadillac. The new design for 1951 was conservative, with a reinterpretation of the classic Packard grille. It was only offered on 122 and 127 inch wheelbases, with the 288 and 327 straight eights and optional automatic transmission, with trim levels becoming the 200, 250 Mayfair, 300, and Patrician 400. But many felt it was too conservative and looked more like a mid-sized offering, 
while priced from $2,400 to $3,600, and it would lose market share, relying heavily on aging repeat buyers. But sales for the year were over 100000 So for 1953, Packard introduced the custom-bodied Caribbean, a foray into the personal coupe market, a convertible with full rear wheel openings, a hood scoop, reduced chrome trim, and a standard Continental kit. Prices started at $5,200, with only $750 being made for the year. Other models would be renamed, with the $300 becoming the Cavalier, and the $200 and $250 reviving the Clipper name. The intention was for Clipper to become a separate, low-priced division, but dealers were concerned about losing what had become their best-selling cars, so the separation was delayed. By this point, the big three were aggressively taking control of the market, price-cutting, and taking over, or stealing, small independent dealerships. The common response was to merge with another company, which Packard resisted at first, as the most profitable of the independents but they would soon become part of a unification plan that would bring the primary independent brands under one roof as American Motors. In anticipation with this merger with Nash & Hudson, Packard purchased control of Studebaker. But the merger fell through, for numerous reasons, leaving Packard with Studebaker's mountain of debt, not helped by the fact that Packard bodies had long been outsourced to Briggs, which had recently been taken over by Chrysler who terminated that contract, forcing Packard to invest in new tooling to do the work themselves, meaning plans for the new model were delayed, so changes for 1954 were limited. The Clipper got a distinct rear treatment from the higher-end models, such as the new Pacific hardtop coupe, which the Caribbean was now based on, retaining its hood scoop, but gaining more trim and multi-tone color scheme. But overall, sales were half what they had been, making recovery difficult. The new models arrived for 1955, although the styling changes were minimal. The cars moved to full torsion bar suspension with electronic self-leveling and new overhead valve V8s. For the Clipper, it was a 5.2 liter 320 with 225 to 245 horsepower, and prices ranged from $2,600 to $3,100 while other models used a bigger 5.8 liter 352 with 260 to 275 horsepower, from the $3,900 Patrician to the $5,900 Caribbean. But sales were only up slightly from the year before, being just over 55000 For 1956, the Clipper finally became its own division and moved up to the bigger V8, and there was a new Executive Series Packard that was essentially a Clipper with the big Packard styling. Other Packards moved to a 6.1 liter, 374 cubic inch V8 with 290 to 310 horsepower, making for low 17 second quarter mile times and speeds near 120. But sales were less than half what they were the year before for both Packard and Clipper, partly due to the huge drop in quality with the updated models of the year before. The decision was made to kill off the premium Packard models to focus on the better selling Clippers. But there was no money for a new design, so the Clipper for 1957 was just a Studebaker president with Packard badging and trim, often derisively referred to as a Packard Baker. There would even be a Studebaker pickup with Packard badging used for export markets, but it would still be America's poorest selling domestic brand, with less than 5,000 made for the year. The slapped together styling updates for 1958 certainly didn't help things, and neither did the sporty new Hawk model, also just a restyled Studebaker. So it was determined that no more development funds would be used on the brand, and Packard was sacrificed in an effort to save what remained of Studebaker, a sad and rapid demise of a brand that had once ruled the roads in the eyes of many. And as always, thanks for watching. Don't forget to comment below and like and subscribe.